My first recipe is a savoury pie using an ingredient we have in abundance, the good old rabbit. It's lean and healthy, and I want to pair it up with another flavour. For our continental friends, rabbit is a delicacy. In Spain, it's sabo chorizo. In Italy, it's pancetta. So I'm taking a leaf out of their book with my rabbit and pancetta pot pies. When you think of pancetta, you don't normally think of sourcing it right here on our shores. David and Karen Richards are artisan charcuterie producers, making some award-winning piggy products in Dorset and taking the south of England by storm. We were here last year and it was really busy then, nearly sold out and hoping we're going to sell out today. Today, the Richards cured meats appear to be attracting some new fans. What do you think? It tastes yummy. You think it tastes yummy? Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's a really nice, quite smooth, not too strong. So you don't think of this as being British, though. Not no, when you go for this. cured no, meats. No, 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 not for cured meats. No, no. But that's good. That was really good. Yeah. I'll put it on plate for you if you like. <laughs> It's not just Karen and David's customers that think their charcuterie is amazing. We put it uh, into uh, um, the Taste of the West Awards last year, and I'm thrilled to say that we won the best cured meat product in the whole of the Taste of the West. So, yeah, we're really pleased with it. The charcuterie and pancetta that David and Karen produce rivals the best that Italy, France and Spain have to offer. David's interest in smoking, curing and drying meat started on a small scale until it became much more than just a hobby. I was made redundant at the age of 50 and I couldn't find another job. And um, my dear lady wife suggested that uh, I try making a business out of what was a hobby. And it's been very successful. For David and Karen to create the best pancetta they can, they get their pork from their local pig farmer, Sam. He rears free-range rare breed pigs called Oxford Sandy and Blacks, which have a perfect fat to meat ratio and a great flavour. They are free to roam the woods and snuffle out tasty treats like chestnuts and acorns. If they're free-range, then they tend to be it's happier meat that you're dealing with. Sam keeps the pigs for us uh, for considerably longer than uh, he would if they were, say, pork pigs or bacon pigs, but I need them bigger than that because then you, you, get the, you get the fat actually marbling in the meat, which you wouldn't get normally. So these pigs are earmarked for you. Uh, we, they're not ready yet because you need them a lot bigger than this. These would normally go for probably bacon at this size. How much longer have we got before they'd be ready for charcuterie? Probably another two to three months. At the bottom of their garden, David and Karen hand cure, air dry and smoke salamis, chorizo and wild game. It's the pancetta that David is particularly proud of. We make pancetta from the belly of the pig. Uh, we carefully cut the belly and uh, take the skin off and then we, uh, we mix a, a, a blend of herbs and spices and curing salt. David has his own special recipe for the meat rub, which he's perfected over time. He uses a secret blend of fresh herbs and spices, including salt, fresh garlic and thyme, bay leaves, juniper, and mace to impart some amazing flavor into the meat. Once the salt and aromatics are rubbed in, the meat is then left for two weeks to absorb the flavor before it's left to ferment and mature for months. Well, the reason for curing meat is to preserve it. As you can see, this is starting to dry now. It's turning a lot darker. It's, it's quite flexible still, so it's got a long way to go. In Italy, in the, in the mountain regions, the, the humidity tends to be absolutely right for the production of charcuterie products. Here in the UK, it's, it's a whole lot harder. So we have to use rooms like this uh, to, to recreate what they've got naturally. If there's too much humidity in the air, um, then you often get um, mould growth on the, on the meat uh, and it can go rotten. So really, without rooms like this, which are temperature and humidity controlled, it's really difficult to produce a consistent product. David's pancetta is his pride and joy. So this is the finished pancetta. This has been cured, it's been fermented, it's been air dried. This is just heavenly. 
David and Karen's passion for their cured meats is clear to see, and I can't wait to add this rich flavour to my rabbit and pancetta pie. Karen, David, welcome to my Hello. kitchen. Thank you. It's fantastic to see home-produced charcuterie, because most of the time it comes from France, Italy, Spain. It's nice to see all this being made in this country. Wow, what a collection. <laughs> it is, isn't this it? This is only some of it, yeah. too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So just run through what you've got here, then. Well, at this end, you've got uh, air-dried beef. If we were, if we were in uh, Italy, then we could call it brisola, but we can't. So that is Dorset air droid beef. Oh. That's Dorset. Dorset, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got huge depth of flavour. It yeah. It's got port in the cure, so you get a lovely long finish when you're eating it. Do you make biltong as well? No. no. <laughs> you could, though, couldn't you? We could, we could but could. That's, that's just too easy. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's not what the South Africans say. <laughs> well, sorry, but it's too easy. OK. Now, you're moving on to the, the pancetta. Yep. Now, obviously, it's to do with the fat and the mm -hmm. meat and the way mm -hmm. it's cured. Now, when you come down to this, which looks like pure fat... It is, that's back fat. And that is cured and fermented back fat. Mm. And if you were in Italy, you'd actually just slice that off and eat it yeah, as it yeah. was. You're it's, kidding me. It's divine. Honest. It's absolutely divine. It's but infused with uh, truffle oil and it's got... English it's truffle oil, English yeah. truffle oil we've I used I can smell it. the truffle yeah, oil on yeah. it. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do is a rabbit and pancetta pie. Oh, yum, yum. Using your gorgeous pancetta. I don't use rabbit as often as I should. It's so lean, which makes the pancetta a perfect pairing as the fat works to impart more flavour. And what I've done here, I've browned off some of the meat from the rabbit, and I've still got a couple more pieces to do, which I'm going to pop into a pan. There's a little bit of butter and oil in here. Just brown them off for about five minutes. Now, I need some pancetta. Which one do you recommend? Mm. Do you know, I think I'd probably go for that one. OK. It's got sort of a really good, good mix of, of uh, meat and fat there. The smell of that is incredible. It's got thyme and lovely things in it. Pat on the back to you. The fact that you win in awards now based on all your hard work as well. I mean, it proves the point. Pat, it's all about passion. Yeah, it, it is. It's understanding yeah. and learning as you go into which you imagine you still are. Yeah, still every day. <laughs> oh, yes. I add some garlic, fennel, onion and the dorset pancetta to the pan I use to brown my rabbit in. So the mixture keeps all that lovely rabbit flavour. That pancetta almost melts as soon as it hits the heat. That's the, that's the fermentation changing the fat. Mm. It, it really yeah. helps it render down very, very fast. Now, what I'm going to do now... Where is it? Over here. I've got some wine I'm going to add to this. And some chicken stock. Add the rabbit back into the pot. Look at this, it smells... God, it smells wonderful. It does smell great. Now, you leave that to cook for about an hour, hour and a half, on a low simmer. And once that happens, then you, re you take the rabbit out and then reduce the liquor that's left in there. Now, if you look over here... This is the liquor that's been reduced in the pan. You can see the fennel, you see the pancetta, you see the onion. And obviously the rabbit at this stage has not, not gone back in there, but it's about to go back in. I add some cream to the reduced liquor to give an extra touch of luxury. And some chopped parsley for the herby freshness that really complements all the flavours. So I've got the rabbit here that's been taken out and cooled. And basically you rip off, you flake the rabbit and pop it back into the creamy mixture. Mm. And once you've done that, the whole mix needs to cool down, and that is your filling for your pie. Have you ever done anything with, um, with wabbit? We, yes. we have, yeah. But we, we actually tried um, doing a, a smoked rabbit loin, but it was delicious, but so much work. Such a fiddle. But I haven't, haven't done a, a rabbit and pancetta pie yet. I think that's, mm, that's going to be on the menu soon. Mm. It's a little bit different. It is a little bit different. I'm just going to try a little bit of this now. It's quite well seasoned. Uh, it's quite well seasoned. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Now at this stage, now take it off the heat and then leave that to cool. As the filling cools, I prepare my pastry. For this recipe, I've already made a rich buttery pastry that just needs rolling out. 
You can see the butter in there. So you know this is going to taste fantastic. You've got those beautiful filling. And it's only right that you spend that bit of time also on the, on the pie as well, because the lid itself is all part and parcel of it. You want that flake, you want that butteriness, you want that crunch to go with it as well. So what you do is you've rolled out your pastry. I'm going to fill a couple of them. Over here, I have my cooled filling. You can see the cream, see the rabbit. And you put that straight into your pots. You don't put the pastry underneath, you just put it no. on the top? No, not, the, not designed like this. What I'm going to do is make a lid. OK. But, I mean, you could... I, I would do it if I was doing a thinner, you know, thinner pie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something as deep as this, you're always going to have a problem with soggy bottom. Soggy bottom, yeah. yes, I know the problem. Uh, <laughs> Does it rain up there a lot, does it? <laughs> I've made individual pies today, but you could make a large one to share. Now I'm just going to roll out some dough. And you'll see why in a minute. Cut that in half, probably get a couple from there. A little bit of flour. That butter's sort of starting to come out as I roll it out, you see. And then you get each pie. Just push a bit of dough around the lid. Once the lid is on, use a beaten egg to wash the top and then bake at 200 degrees C for 25 to 30 minutes or until they're gorgeously golden brown. Look at this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Very hot, but very delicious. Mm. And there you have a rabbit and pancetta pot pie. These little pies with rabbit and delicious Dorset pancetta are a perfect winter supper. I like to serve them with buttered greens and some roasted carrots. You'll have to wait a little bit longer, guys, to try it. But thank you very much for You're bringing so your shakuti. It's a pleasure. Thank yeah. you.